In extreme working environments, personnel safety is paramount. Today we will look at three potential hazards faced by workers during offshore flaring operations on oil and gas rigs, some of the most challenging workplaces in the world. During flaring operations, the burning of petrochemicals and hydrocarbons results in high temperatures, intense light emission and potentially injurious levels of industrial noise. This means that heat stress, noise injuries and flare glare are three of the major environmental hazards faced by personnel during normal flaring operations. With the correct use of effective personal protective equipment, you can do your bit to guard against these hazards, but PPE alone is not enough. Rig workers face numerous hazards on a day-to-day -day basis. Today we will focus on three that should be considered before every shift, but particularly during flaring. The first is heat stress, a very real problem in high temperature working environments. Some of the symptoms of heat stress include fatigue, headaches, lack of concentration, moist skin and muscle cramps. Some safety problems are common to all hot work environments. Heat tends to promote accidents due to the slipperiness of sweaty palms, dizziness or the fogging of safety glasses. Naturally, wherever there are hot surfaces, steam or flame, the possibility of burns from accidental contact also exists. Aside from these obvious dangers, the frequency of accidents is higher in hot environments than in more moderate working conditions. One reason is that working in a hot environment lowers the mental alertness and physical performance of an individual. Increased body temperature and physical discomfort promote irritability, anger and other emotional states which can sometimes cause workers to overlook safety procedures or to divert attention away from hazardous tasks. Excessive exposure to a hot work environment can bring about a variety of heat-induced disorders. Heat stroke is the most serious health problem associated with working in hot environments. It occurs when the body's heat regulating system fails and sweating becomes inadequate. The body's only effective means of removing excess heat breaks down with little warning to the victim that a crisis point has been reached. A heat stroke victim's skin is hot and usually dry, red or spotted. Body temperature is usually 44.5 degrees Celsius or 105 degrees Fahrenheit or higher and the patient may be mentally confused, delirious and possibly in convulsions or unconscious. Unless the victim receives quick and appropriate treatment, death can occur. Personnel with signs or symptoms of heat stroke require immediate hospitalisation, however first aid should be administered immediately. This includes removing the victim to a cool area, thoroughly soaking their clothing with water and vigorously fanning their body to increase cooling. Further treatment is required to complete the cooling process and to monitor for complications which can accompany the heat stroke. Heat exhaustion includes several clinical disorders with symptoms similar to the early signs of heat stroke. Heat exhaustion is caused by the loss of large amounts of fluid by sweating, sometimes with excessive loss of salt. A worker suffering from heat exhaustion still sweats, but experiences extreme weakness or fatigue, giddiness, nausea or headache. In more serious cases, the victim may vomit or lose consciousness. The skin is clammy and moist, the complexion is pale or flushed and the body temperature is normal or only slightly elevated. In most cases, treatment involves having the victim rest in a cool place and drink plenty of liquids. Victims with mild cases of heat exhaustion usually recover spontaneously with this treatment. Those with severe cases may require extended care for several days. Heat cramps are painful spasms of the muscles that occur when workers sweat profusely in heat, drink large quantities of water but do not adequately replace the body's salt loss. The drinking of large quantities of water tends to dilute the body's fluids while the body continues to lose salt. Eventually the low salt level in the muscles causes painful cramps. The affected muscles may be part of the arms, legs or abdomen, but those muscles used in performing the work are usually the ones most susceptible to cramps. Cramps may occur during or after work hours and may be relieved by drinking salted liquids. It is worth noting that personnel with heart problems or those on a low sodium diet who work in hot environments should consult a physician about what to do under these conditions. Heat rash is most likely to occur in hot, humid environments where sweat is not easily removed from the surface of the skin by evaporation and the skin remains wet most of the time. The sweat ducts become plugged and a skin rash soon appears. When the rash is extensive or when it is complicated by infection, Prickly heat can be very uncomfortable and may reduce a worker's performance. The worker can prevent this condition by resting in a cool place for part of each day and by regularly bathing and drying their skin. 
Transient heat fatigue refers to the temporary state of discomfort and mental or psychological strain arising from prolonged heat exposure. Personnel unaccustomed to the heat are more susceptible and can suffer to varying degrees a decline in task performance, coordination, alertness and vigilance. The severity of transient heat fatigue will be lessened by a period of gradual adjustment to the hot environment or heat acclimatisation. The results of heat stress can range from reduced productivity, the potential of unnecessary injuries due to lack of focus and concentration, long-term injuries including brain damage and even death. Thermal radiation is measured in British thermal units or BTUs. Around 2,000 BTU is required to boil a pot of coffee. Without thermal barriers in place, 5 to 10,000 BTUs could potentially be transposed onto a rig during flaring. Safe working parameters, as recommended by API 521, state that 500 BTUs or 1.58 kilowatts per square metre is the highest allowable radiation value at any location where personnel wearing appropriate clothing may be continuously exposed. Due to the extreme levels of thermal radiation created during the process, all rigs should be kitted out with a heat suppression safety system before commencing flaring operations as a primary form of protection. This will ensure that the safety parameters stated in API 521 are achieved.